All right, hey ladies and gentlemen, uh, Micah Carter here with you for a few minutes just talking about this particular unit. You know, uh, there's, uh, you know, a lot of technology out these days in much higher end, but this particular little mini PC, it's a HP 705, G4705, right? Now there's different elements of, you know, and it's a mini, right? And there's different uh, computers in this line, right? There's a small form factor, which is ironically bigger than this, right? And then there is... Uh, also they're fuller size desktops so there's like at least three different sizes of computers in this kind of design factor right here right uh, from HP and generally speaking you know say these are like in the business line of machines right especially with these smaller computers are designed to be compact and uh, you know you, you know kind of affordable in materials if you will right because it's a smaller unit uh, but they're actually very powerful and like I said this is a 705 right it's an HP G4 right so there's it's the G2 G3 G4 I think there's a G1 too but you know just being within a reasonable range of the time frame you know this one is probably released in like 2016 so it's you know not like a real recent model because this one actually looks really kind of pretty clean right uh, because a lot of businesses will have this kind of units and they might, you know, close their business or they're replacing their technology or something or they're upgrading and they will just tear all these units out and they've hardly been used in many cases and they will just resell them, right? You know, maybe they'll have like 10 or even, you know, 50 units or something like that and they'll just resell them. And you can find them on like eBay and Amazon and certainly many other places uh, for pretty bargain prices. Like, you know, if it was 100 to $200, you can get a pretty good starter unit with at least a 250 gig SSD drive, right? And they have different options, all kinds of different setups. You want to look for the specs you want, right? You might want to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which is uh, a factor that you might want to have built in. But you can get a dongle if that's, you know, a last resort. But I prefer to get everything on board and get everything you can kind of all inclusive myself so that's what I recommend you might be looking at these thinking about buying one and you want to know about it right so like you said there's different ones there's the lines that have the Intel chips and then the lineup that has the uh, AMD chips right this one here is a Ryzen 5 2400 G right and it not necessarily super compatible with like Windows 11 right out the box. Now, I'm sure you can install it on there easily enough with the unsupported, you know, software or unsupported, um, you know, hardware, you know, uh, options and so forth. Uh, but you know, it, when there's running running Windows 10 or 11, uh, it certainly runs it capably from what I've used so far, and uh, it does have built-in extra graphic uh, capabilities with this Radeon Vega graphics capabilities that it has so and it has a 3.6 processor so for this little machine all things considered I would say it's pretty powerful right um, so it's not like it's not like unstable right it's pretty stable and will certainly run Windows 11 nice and smooth uh, you know so but you can see it has some different ports in the front you see how this size you know it's about four pounds I think maybe five pounds roughly and uh, you know, it's actually all metal, I believe, if I'm correct. I believe I saw somebody talking about that. And uh, so it's pretty simple unit. doesn't have, you know, a whole lot of bells and whistles, but it does have a good amount of ports. In the front, you got this USB-C port, and then you have two regular USBs. But, like, this is, like, I think a USB 3.0 maybe, and this might be a 3.2. So it's a little bit more super speed. It has like a little lightning bolt next to it. So I'm pretty sure it's faster. And then two headphones jacks or speaker jacks, right? In case you need two. I'm not sure exactly. But, you know, instead of getting a splitter, at least you'd have two if you were trying to both listen to headphones or use it for different reasons. It might be good to have two. So, and then, of course, a power switch. And uh, underneath here, it tells you some of the specs. Now, there's... Like I said, there's the sets, there's the 605, the 705, and the 805, which correspond with different levels of AMD chips, right? So if it has a, the, you know, like an 805 instead of an 800, the 800 would be the Intel line of chip, probably comparable level to the Ryzen chip that they would, you know, have in the AMD in that same level. So, uh, you know, the 705, it's not, you know, it's like you said, about 2016. Now there's G4, then like it's a set of G4 is, I think the name of the 
you know, I'm not sure if that's like the motherboard layout exactly. I don't know every detail of all that stuff, so I'm trying to give you what I know. But uh, G4 is part of this model name, and it's pretty tricky because it's easy to be getting something that you don't think you're getting because just one part of the name is different. It's a G4 705. It's an HP Elite Desk Mini G4 705, right, with a... 20 uh, AMD Ryzen 5 2400G 3.6 gigahertz processor 250 gigabyte uh you know SSD and then also uh 16 gigs of RAM right so now it's not like the highest end thing you know someone who's want you know has a most recent computer really wants to do you know highest most recent games and you know more video editing same time, I've been able to edit videos with this fine, you know. But like I said, if you're doing some real high definition stuff in 4K or 8K, you might feel the need to have like that 64 gigs of RAM, 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, right? At least 32, you might feel like it's more appropriate. But at the same time, you know, for uh, if you're on a budget and you're just trying to replace something, or you know, maybe your computer went out or something, something's wrong with it, or maybe you just have an old, you know, computer like a tower from you know, 2012 or something crazy, right? Uh, you know, you can just pick up one of these for as little as 100 to 200 dollars, and then you can get all kinds of different variations of it. And uh, they probably like if you find them on eBay and, and Amazon, especially on eBay, you'll find like some of them for parts and that are not even totally complete might not have a hard drive in it or something like that in my opinion just spend the extra money and get one that's done and ready to go the way you want it right so but once again you have these ports in the front now going into the back here we can see this is where any other ports are there's nothing on the side the top and you know the sides and the back here has you know some usb ports so there's two on each side i think two of them are faster than the others because i've just kind of done a little bit of research and i've gathered from different people online uh so just you know don't want to be redundant if you might have done some other research certainly but you know maybe you get something out of this that you didn't pick up before but two usb slots here i mean sorry uh display ports display port slots right display port right and uh then h and then uh a one gigabit uh one gigabyte or gigabyte uh, gigabit ethernet right one gigabit one gigabit <laughs> Uh, and then a flexible port that can be interchanged out with something else if needed, but right now is an HDMI, right? So you'd have to have that other port, and you'd have to open it up and change it out. Uh, so if you feel comfortable doing that, you might want to do that for some reason. But you can always get, you know, the type of cord goes from HDMI to VGA or whatever. And I recommend getting a good cord, right, for your video, because, you know, spend a couple extra bucks to get the cord that has... You know, it supports at least 4K or, you know, the slightly, you know, higher signal transfer, stuff like that. So get a good cord and you go with a cheap or used cord. You might not get a cord that can support the video capabilities of this or your monitor, right? So definitely it's good, in my opinion, to use a reasonable quality video cords, right? Especially to prevent screen flicker. Like I had this machine or one of, I had another one like this. But, uh, you know, just using a basic HDMI cord I had, um, you know, I was, it was flickering all the time, you know. You know, might think it's something more complicated, but really just getting a new cord. I just got another cord, different brand, higher quality, uh, and it completely eliminated the problem. So if you get screen flicker with this or any unit, that's definitely something to think about. But, you know, like I said, once again, you can see these ports in the back. You can look kind of closely for yourself. So maybe you're looking at this machine. Like I said, this probably indicates right here the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is built into this unit. You could, like I said, always get a dongle and put it in, you know, the USB port or something, but that'll take up one of your USB ports. Uh, so, but, yeah, this unit, like I said, I played, you know, a couple few games on it. Like, you can play, like, uh, you know, Halo and stuff like that. You know, it seems to run fine. Uh... But, yeah, I mean, maybe some of the more recent games might be a little bit challenging on it somehow. I haven't played any of them to really know. Uh, but I know that everything I have done on this machine has been snappy and stable so far. And hasn't crashed even one time. Right? And I actually have three units similar to this. I have another one just like it. And then another one with an Intel chip. Hard to really say which one's better. The Intel has a 3.4 gigahertz processor. This one's a 3.6. I would say this AMD almost feels a little more powerful, right? The, the Intel I have is a G3, so it's got a slight, it's a, a previous generation 
uh, you know, model design, which might have like, you know, one less USB port or something. I can't remember all the exact details of what's different between the G2, 3, and 4. It might be even hard to find those specifics, but I recommend getting the most recent one, at least a G3, but maybe a G4, or even a G5, because there is G5s, and I think G6s, and even all the way up to maybe a G9s, but, you know, this one here is kind of a bargain budget kind of at the level it's at but at the same time you can get a good bang for your buck if you're adding specs to it you know you might want to add you know up to a terabyte or more of you know built-in just drive space maybe, maybe you want to use you know some people like to put a combination of an, a, a regular hard drive and an ssd so there's two of them and have one for their operating system like the ssd might be up for the operating system and then have you know gains stored on your larger hdd drive in my opinion, you want to just have, you know, either one big SSD drive or maybe two SSD drives. Just try to stick it with an SSD drive. <laughs> That's just, you know, in this day and age, you know, you want to kind of be going forward, not backwards. But, uh, yeah, so uh, then also if you want to add RAM to it, I think this can support up to 64 gigs on this one. Uh, G4, the G3, I'm not sure if it'll support 64 gigs. It might only support 32 but uh, maybe G2, I believe, only support 32 max, if I'm, if I'm correct. So, like I said, if you want to be able to support up to 64 gigs, you would probably want to have at least a G4. Um, and you might use, like, ChatGBT or something like that. You know, I'll use it to get some specs. As a matter of fact, I had a page with some stuff I was looking up. Um, and, you know, it'll tell you some basic stuff, but it might not tell you a lot of the specifics that can only come from firsthand understanding, right? Um, so, what I was going to say, there's also two uh, lines. Like I said, there's a G two three four five part of the series it's an element that is kind of determines the abilities of the motherboard that's in there or something or the type of motherboard that can be put in there i believe uh and then there's the the number part of the series like the 600 400 600 and 800 on the intels and then like a 405 605 and a 705 or 805 you know, there's different, I don't know them all, but the, if it ends in a 5, it's probably meaning that it's an Intel chip in there, right? Now, so that's one factor, but there's also a 35-watt version and a 65-watt version, right? And there might be some other ones, like in the more recent models, might have, you know, higher wattages for all I know. But in my opinion, you want to go with the 65-watt, you know, unless you're really concerned, like you're in an office setting, you're concerned about, like, energy consumption or something like that. Uh, you probably want to have something that can perform and be able to, you know, run more stuff at a time. Like if you want to attach stuff to it, you might use a, a couple more watts of power and you want to be able to draw, you know, up to 60, I'm sorry, up to 65 watts and, you know, come with a, actually a 90 watt power cord, right? So it's capable of handling at least 60, up to 65 watts of power easily. Um, but if you get a 35 watt model, they probably work fine too as well. They main indicator that will probably give you an idea of whether it's one or the other is the fact that the 65 watt will typically have I think that I'm not sure if it's a strict rule but it will have this vent the vented uh, top the vented top right it has vents on it now the 35 watt probably won't have any vents on the top right so it'll just be a flat solid top right so now also it may tell you underneath if it's a 35 or 65 watt now this one I couldn't actually find it anywhere on here but usually it'll be like right here somewhere. Now this one doesn't actually say it on here, but if I look at the specs and I open up this computer, it'll say 65 watt on the system uh, property screen, right? So, but yeah, it doesn't say it really here. I've looked, haven't been able to find it here, uh, but it also does come with the built-in operating system, in this case, Windows 10 Pro, right? So this is like designed for business users, but there's certainly no reason you can't use this as an extra home-based machine for entertainment purposes, uh, you know, and some video gaming or whatever else. And many people will fix them up. You can add, like I said, more RAM to it. And you can even add an external graphics card and some of the some external types of graphic cards you can put on it. I don't really feel the need for that myself. But if you're, like, into really into gaming and trying to get an older budget PC to do something like that, that might be a good idea. Uh, so, but like I said, you probably in this day and age, in my opinion, you're probably want to get at least a terabyte drive SSD and probably, you know, more like 32 gigs of RAM if you want it to be capable for up the next, you know, three to five years or more. 
Um, same time, you know, you might buy something a little bit more recent, like the G5 or a G6 with the i, you know, even an i9 or the Ryzen 7 more recent chips. But same time, you know, you might want to give some of the more recent times, the more recent technology, a little bit more time to, you know, go through a couple of generations and iterations before that way well, you know because this one's here actually pretty solid for the Ryzen 5s and the uh, i7 or even the i5 Intel chips a i5-8500 like I said this is an AMD I, uh, Ryzen 5 2400G but there's also the Intel chips that are in the comparable range like the i5-8500 or 8500T I believe which could be a factor in determining how much power it uses, I'm correct. So there's a few little nuances in there you might consider when looking uh, and researching, you know, what you're looking for. Um, if you're looking in, like, eBay, for instance, you're probably going to want to definitely look up all the different spec words you're looking for. You want to have, you know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, then you want to put that in your search. You want to have an SSD, put that in your search. You want to have at least 32 gigs of RAM, put that in your search, etc. And just really search a bit. If you're on eBay, look for a reasonable seller. And, uh, you know, you probably can't go wrong getting one of these, in my opinion, right? If, like you said, you're trying to, maybe you're trying to replace some old equipment, uh, old, an old computer, right? My computer went, like, terribly old, but, you know, I have an, an elite book as well, which is an HP Elite Book laptop, which is pretty old, but it still works great, you know. Uh, but if you need something a little bit more up to date, you know, this, uh, it, at the same time, not, you know, costing like an arm and a leg. It's not like 500 bucks or more. It's just an extra, you know, maybe 200 bucks, right, for a pretty darn good unit. Or maybe even a little 150 for something to start you off. And maybe just to upgrade, maybe you have something really old in this, you know, even the 250 gig SSD drive and having, you know, 16 gigs of RAM would be a big upgrade. So, anyway, this is Mike here. Just want to say thank you for listening. If this helps you make a better decision on this unit or if you've used these units and you have any thoughts or personal input that would help someone who is maybe listening to the video and just trying to make a decision on this type of unit. Now, there's other PCs, other mini PCs out there. There's tons of them, really, and there are all kinds of brands. I'm sure many of them could have some advantages in a number of ways and there's certainly some more recent with more powerful but you're probably going to spend maybe a bit more money in many cases or you're going to get a brand that you know you might not really be so confident about not to say the hp is the absolute best in my opinion like they have some you know bad products too but their business line products in my opinion their business level their elite line products are pretty darn good so that's just my experience. Tell me what you think. And in the meantime, I want to say thank you for listening in. But do please support, like, or even comment or uh, support the channel in some way. And maybe we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you for listening in. See you next time. Bye-bye.